in this video uh, an, an interesting, perhaps interesting experiment where I want to show how uh, coils can couple in an electromagnetic way. And then especially a little bit about radio coils and about the direction of the coils. The first idea uh, of this video was to make an IF filter that did not succeed, but anyway, um, it finally resulted in this experiment where I can show how you can couple two coils. Uh, these are two uh, milk can dobs. That's the Dutch wor word, by the way. And here they are again, and here there is a slit, and I've wound here copper wire on it. I want to skip very, very quickly through all these photographs, because perhaps they are not very interesting, but anyway, somewhat interesting. Uh, this is the wire that I used, 0.3 millimeters diameter, and here I've made a small um, cut to make it easier to wind the coil. Uh, when you want to do it, uh, hold the, the cup of the milk can with a piece of pliers. These are the two coils that I made, both 150 windings. And here again, and it's very uh, important that you indicate where you started the winding and where you ended. So a is the start of the winding, say the ground part of the coil in a certain way, and here is B, that's the top of the coil. That is important because we have to do with phase issues when you want to do experiments with radio coils. Anyway, so I did that. Uh, you can connect these coils to A help oscillator, that help oscillator is on my YouTube channel. I found that one of the coils oscillated on 488 kilohertz, the other one on 500 kilohertz. That's 20 kilohertz in difference. Now in both cases we have 150 windings. How can that be? Well, perhaps uh, some coil is somewhat more pressed and the other one is more open, etc, etc. So, uh, here again, uh, important, I mounted these two coils on um, a bamboo stick and I had to open here and you can do that very, very carefully with a uh, stump screwdriver, make a kind of hole here and uh, uh, push the screwdriver through it and then you have two holes and the good thing of that all is that you can mount these two coils on one um, pin here. It's wood, it's wood, of course no metal, wood is the best and these coils both have a quite high quality factor Otherwise they uh, would not oscillate. When the quality factor of such a coil is low, it doesn't oscillate on the help oscillator. And here uh, you can see that this also makes it possible to move the two coils up and down and also turn them here. And that's what I wanted to show in this video. Here again, the same thing. Now the top coil is somewhat turned. And here again how it was made. The wire is by the way very thin uh, and I've used brass nails to solder one of the wires. The, uh, say the underside, the underside of the coil, here this coil is uh, uh, fastened with a tiny uh, nail here. And you can also fasten that with some glue, contact glue. And here is a kind of good solution. 
uh, I've used here contact glue and say wires that are by their nature somewhat sloppy. That makes that the, the tiny wires of 0.3 millimeters don't break off when you turn that coil. And why is that this perhaps interesting? Not only about say how to couple the coils, but you can use these two coils. They are around 500 kilohertz. You can use them as an antenna coil. That's perhaps interesting. Well, that was the final photograph. Let's go to the the real situation on the on the workbench. At first, this is the schematic of this experiment. There's one test oscillator that's here. It's working around 474 kilohertz. And I've connected two oscilloscopes. One of the oscilloscopes is connected to the oscillator. And the other scope is connected to the other coil. Say the coil that can be uh, turned around. This is the frequency on the coil that's fixed and here the frequency on the coil that you can turn around. So uh, again here the help oscillator, test oscillator, the schematic is on my YouTube channel. I've published it and there is there are more videos where I use this. And here's the one coil and here's the other coil and the idea is that you can turn them. So here you can turn uh, the, the upper coil opposite to the coil that's on the underside. So what will happen uh, when you do that? Regarding say the frequency etc etc. So the idea was uh, to make an experimental IF filter that didn't work. Of course I'm going to do more experiments to make that successful. Uh, but the coupling ID is also interesting and like I told you can use this setup. When you want to receive a specific frequency on short wave, medium wave or whatever. And you can see it here. It's now around uh, 400 and 470 kilo cycles. Here again how the cores were made. I have already explained that. Make indications what is A and what is B. So what's the beginning and what's the top of the coil. So let's see what happens when, when I turn this coil here. I want to. I have to look on two uh, oscilloscopes. Now I turn the upper upper coil. And you can see that now there is no coupling between, say, the oscillator here. Oscillator coil can also be an antenna coil, and here the coil that receives that is tuned, in fact, to the same frequency, but it receives a uh, electromagnetic signal from the first coil, say the antenna coil or whatever, in this case the oscillator coil. So here see there's now there is no coupling because the, the coils are turned in a diagonal way. So you can see what I'm doing. And here the same and when you say make the, di the, the distance between the two coils smaller, what I'm doing here, I'm moving the, the, this coil to a higher position, the coupling gets less, it gets also more critical, so that's critical coupling of, a, of two coils, that is also something to do with IF filters etc etc. 
and that means that in this case uh, there's no frequency difference, almost no frequency difference, uh, but the, cup, the coupling gets less, but the tuning gets the same. So now it's on this high position, the upper coil, and let's see what happens. Again we have, say, we couple the two coils, oscillator frequency very fierce, a received frequency on the other side of the coil, not very fierce, but anyway, you can see that it couples. And all around, say, 475 uh, kilohertz. You can change that. Uh, when you mount, say, a variable capacitor parallel to the oscillator coil, I have done that here. See what happens. Frequency changes to 389 kilo cycles. Let's see. Now I turn that variable capacitor again. We are of 490 kilo cycles. This is completely logical. There is some deterioration here. It has to do with, say, how the coils couple anyway. There are say possibilities to make uh, to make that better. Thus has also to do with the resonance frequency, but anyway. Uh, here you see that the best waveform is when that uh, tuning capacitor is here. Anyway, that means that there is a specific frequency where the whole setup works at its best, that is 480 kilohertz. Anyway, so again, uh, well, everything was told. I've shown the, the the photographs. We can, of course, see, try, test how the coupling is done. Uh, perhaps my video will stop with suddenly. Uh, my excuses for that, uh, etc. Uh, well, so when I make the coupling smaller, that means that we we uh, move the the upper coil to the top. There is of course less coupling, and this principle is also used in IF filters, in tube radios, and in. Uh, transistor radios, there is still coupling, you can see it here, I turn it now here, but the coupling is less. Now I push the upper coil down and there is again more coupling and when I move the coil, well, you can see there is no coupling. So you can use this again in all kinds of electronic circuits. This also refers to um, say not only radio circuits but also circuits on other frequencies made with other types of coils say with ferrite rod coils or uh, say um, uh, iron and then I mean uh, mu iron, weak iron coils. When you do the same experiment, you can you can see the same results, though of course on other frequencies. Anyway, thanks for watching. Schematic again, and that was more or less all.